Well, today you have to face each other. Today we are seated in the round, only so many back of heads viewing today. It's not the usual way we set St. Matthew's up, in case you've forgotten. Usually we have lines going to the front, and for people joining us on live stream, it may mean things are less immediately visible. It may be a bit annoying. You may be feeling just a bit irritated by this, a bit uncomfortable, a bit disoriented or unsettled. If so, let's be aware of that. On this first Sunday in the season of creation, such awareness of discomfort may be important to pay attention to. It may be a means to dislodge us from our complacency. We have here before us a pool piled with blocks of ice, melting ice. We live in an earth-warming, melting ice cap, sea-rising world. Things are out of balance. We are utterly dependent upon the finely tuned and fragile resilience of this unique earthly ecosystem that we had no part in creating, but we are having a really big part in dismantling. The thing is, I see that, I hear that, I know that, but I just don't seem to get it. I live near a number of beaches. One of them is Long Bay. Some of you may know Long Bay, up the top of the North Shore. About five years ago, there was a line of posts along the beach, about two meters on the seaward side of the sand dunes. They were joined by ropes to stop foot traffic across the sand dunes. Two or three years ago, a year or, ago, a year or two later than that, I noticed that the posts were gradually disappearing. They were being washed away. A year or so after that, the unplanted sand dunes were gone. The tide line was now at the planted sand dunes. Now, the tide line is at the trees that were once behind those planted sand dunes that aren't there anymore. I see it, I hear it, I know it. I just don't seem to get it. There's out of control fires, there's searing heat waves, there's unprecedented wet weather events, flooding and Pacific islands are disappearing into the sea. I see it, I hear it, I know it. I just don't seem to get it. Last week in the gospel, Peter heard Jesus, saw Jesus, knew and confessed Jesus as the Messiah. Peter was named as the rock, the foundation stone. This week, Matthew has Jesus' sparse wording telling what being a Messiah means. That is not what Peter reckoned on. This week, Peter is the stumbling block because he doesn't get it. Jesus is God-blessed. God indwelling, Messiah, we confess. But like us, he walks the way of suffering. He is vulnerable to life. He is vulnerable to the power dynamic of human systems. He doesn't resist it, and he is put to death with that addendum that the story doesn't end completely there. So for us to incarnate as Jesus did, is to live fully within the world as it is. Being God-blessed doesn't mean not suffering. In blessing and in suffering, the grace of God is with us. And the only place incarnation can happen is this creation. The only place with interweb of elements subtly and suitably balanced to support our life form and the multitude of life forms that dwell here. You know, I see that and I hear that and I know that I don't bring myself to life. 
that I didn't bring myself to being, that most of my bodily functions that happen to sustain my life happen without me knowing about it consciously. But I still don't live as one who gets it. So what is this getting it thing? I think it requires us to give something up or maybe to let something go, something really fundamental. To use religious language to be heart changed. Incarnation, living, revealing divine presence is only possible because of the sustaining life of this world. Getting it asks me to give up resisting the vulnerability of that. It's asking me to stand exposed to this war truth. Getting it is being willing to have my heart broken open, giving up life, our life, the one that we possess and name as our own, giving it up for life. And for this to be made real, we can't stay the same. We can't incarnate the same. That way of living and being reveals our inner desires and our grasping. This other way of living and being reveals the innovating life of God that we participate in. That we can't lay our hands on it. It's not ours to possess or own. It is with us and all of creation. It is life. The grace of God with us is not a free pass to an easy life. Rather, it is an invitation for us to live more consciously present, more awake and alive to the world and how we live in it. The grace of God sustains us as we experience as suffering the limitations and the constraints and the reality of rubbing up against the real-time life of the world. The grace of God is with us in our physical vulnerability and in our awakening to the effect that human priorities have upon the living systems around us. But what is it to live in the world conscious of being a God-sustained person? In the words of Clarissa Pinkola Estes, to live as needed, awakened souls who show up and shine. As we navigate the times we find ourselves in, the times we are made for. I want to borrow some wisdom from wayfinding leadership. Wayfinding emerges from a Tao Māori worldview. Wayfinding wisdom is expressed in the complex of skills and attributes of those who for centuries have directed tiny craft across vast distances between scattered and far-flung islands, who have navigated by reading the movement and the changes of the natural world and the movement and changes of the people on the craft with them. It is quite different. Take, for example, when a journey is embarked on, say, from Auckland to Hawaii. Hawaii is the destination, but it is not the purpose of the journey. There are many layers to the purpose for which a journey is taken. Of course, there is a common purpose in sailing together to get there, but every single person on that journey embarks with a different purpose. The journey itself, the waka going forth, may have a purpose of influencing in our world in different ways. And as the journey unfolds, as people go from landmark to landmark, the purposes will shift and change. Because a purpose in this wayfinding wisdom, the claim is that a purpose is never static. It is a vision for becoming. The destination is not out there somewhere we are not. The future is in each moment. 
purpose is to become the kind of people we want to be as we journey. To navigate these times we are in, to be the kind of people we want to be, aware that the future is in each moment, we need to be honest about who we are. With all our foibles, not to be stuck in fear and fixedly infallible. Peter today, and actually pretty consistently in most of Peter's character throughout his story in the gospel, he may be rock of the church, but he reveals consistently with great enthusiasm his fickleness and his frailty. Even so, Peter is included. Peter keeps on joining in and participating. So if you admit to not getting it, is that frailty? Or is that honesty? I think being willing to get it is risky. It cracks open our heart because it reveals our vulnerability to life on this planet and it is scary. So we need companions with us as we navigate the changed waters and the lifescapes of our world. Maybe we need companions especially to challenge us with great compassion. Those many times that we know we see it, we hear it, we know it, and we are too afraid to face what getting it asks of us. We need companions to stand with us as we have the courage to risk the enormous vulnerability of a changed heart, of being changed, and then having to learn anew how on earth to navigate our life in and of this world, but not as we were.